Well, I spotted yesterday that for some reason the truck's not charging on solar. I've just tested it with the engine running and it's still charging with the engine running. Uh, and I've tested it on shore power and that's still charging, but yeah, it's not. Well, we're under a tree, but we've not had any solar now for three days. So something's gone amiss with it. So let's go take a look at it. I'm just starting to get, uh, get the stuff out the back. Um, just to be able to get the solar charger so I can get my meter on it, see if I can try and find out what's wrong. So, this is the solar charger. Let's see if I can get a bit of light on it. It's a little better. I've got to try and uh, get this off and get a meter on the connections. That's going to be fun. No doubt. Hmm. Ah. You can get to the screws with the connections on them there. But at my age, I can't read that too close up. So I'm gonna have to go and get my glasses. <laughs> Let's see if we can see what it says. So the PV are the lower two connections, plus and minus, and the battery is the top two connections, plus and minus. It's still communicating with my phone on Bluetooth and not throwing up any errors. So let's see what we uh, see what we can find out when we put a meter on it. So, there's the sun on the roof. Yeah. There's some sun on the roof. Not a lot, but there ought to be enough to um, give us some voltage. So, that's just my multimeter. Auto ranging, so I haven't got to worry about what, I'm ex what voltage I'm expecting to find. Let's put the probes in on the PV side and see what we get. So that's giving us 82 volts, 82.4, 82.5. So that ought to be charging. Eighty-two point seven. That's a good voltage. Now I think if I put it on the battery side, I'll simply pick up what the battery's at, which is twenty-six point four. Why is this not charging? I'm going to have to be very careful taking it out in case I short something out. Looks like it's Torx that they've put in. Oh no, Phillips. Okay, let's hope there's a bit of slack on the wires and they don't come out. Well, that's got the perspex removed, which means... Oh. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean there's a lot more slack on this.
So the communication cable, uh, which communicates with the rest of the Victron stuff is unplugged, but I'm not sure whether that's just become unplugged or as I've pulled it out. So I've plugged it back in and the bulk light is flashing blue. It's not the Bluetooth light. It says the thing you, the, the unit thinks it's charging. But I don't think anything else thinks it is. I'll just go and check the Victron control panel inside and see if the Victron control panel thinks it's charging. Nope, the Victron panel says it isn't charging and there's no power going into the battery. Despite having still, let's check the voltage once more, it's coming in from the solar panels. 82.5 volts coming in from the solar panels. And for some reason, there ain't nothing going out. I'm wondering if it's possible to do a reset on it if I disconnect it from the PV. Yeah, it's worth a try. Just disconnect all power from it, from the battery side and from the uh, solar side and see if it uh, does any sort of reset. Need to be careful here, make sure nothing can short out. That's got the battery side out. And I'm just going to hold them in my hand so that they can't touch anything. And that's got the solar side out. So it's it's completely powered off. So I'll hold it out. I'll keep them out for, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. Okay, let's try putting them back in again. Battery, back in, solar, back in, let's tighten them down and the light starts flashing, so again it thinks it's charging. No, no joy in this, so I'm going to put it back together and contact Gary at Motorcraft who installed it, or who's the guru there, and we'll see if he's got any thoughts on it. Hey ho, put everything back and that's me. After climbing down from the truck, I then fired up the app and suddenly realized for the first time that the solar charger thought the batteries were at minus one Celsius. The batteries themselves clearly knew they were at weren't and were at 33. And going into the settings, you could see that there was a charge cutoff at five degrees Celsius. You can't charge lithium ion batteries at cold temperatures. So after overriding that, and setting it to minus five as the cutoff, suddenly the solar charge is charging again. Time to speak to Gary. So, the suggestion from Gary is, uh, and on the forum, that it seems to be a communication issue. What I've discovered is that the solar charger seems to think the battery's at um, minus one degree centigrade Celsius, which mm, doesn't quite look minus one. So I've isolated the batteries and I've isolated the uh, solar panels just by disconnecting the wire because I don't 
think I've got a isolator. Everything has completely gone off now. So that's probably a minute or two. So what I'll do is I'll reconnect and we'll see if it's got the same issue. We'll see if it still thinks the batteries are sitting at minus one. Success. I set the low temperature cutoff back up to five degrees C. The solar charger no longer thinks the batteries are at one minus one degree and we're getting charge all back as it should be. I'm really glad I spotted that issue with the solar charger. It, in the end, powering it down fully and powering it back up again has resolved the communication issue. The solar charger is now fully operational again. And this afternoon with the sun fully on the track, we're getting 400 watts of solar power into the battery. Now, because we powered it down fully, the system has lost its memory of calibration. So it doesn't know where 100% is as soon as it's fully charged again we'll reset that and we'll be uh, we'll be exactly back to where we were before there were any issues top result i just wish i'd spotted that minus one on the solar charger settings and readings uh, before i started taking it all apart although i did have to take it apart to power it down to be fair so not a bad result